Hello folks. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about outboard motors and checking compression. Uh, I've got a little compression gauge here I recently purchased. Um, it wasn't too expensive, $30-$40. Um, let's talk about the gauge first. You need a gauge that will hold the pressure until you can look at it and release it. This has a little release right here on the side. This guy right here. It'll hold the pressure and then release it so you can start the next test. But it gives you a chance to get... I work by myself a lot. It gives you a chance to get back to turn it over at the key and then get back to the motor and see what you had in each cylinder. It, you know with a car, uh, dune buggy, boat, whatever. Uh, since I'm not jumping out the solenoid at the motor or what have you. But with an outboard motor, a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to run it or you have questions about its condition. Uh, one, of the, one of the foremost leading signs of a good motor is the compression. And to test the compression, you got to do each cylinder and under ideal conditions they would all test the same pressure on this gauge uh, five pounds would be real good if they're within five pounds of one another most manufacturers I believe recommend between 10 and 12 or 10 and 15 between each cylinder so if you're running a hundred to hundred and ten on every cylinder you're probably in fair shape but if you run a hundred on two cylinders and then one drops off to 60, 70, 80, that cylinder quite likely has a problem. Whether it's a broken ring, scored cylinder wall, um, it's not going to heal itself. Uh, and you can do a compression test two or three times on each cylinder and do an average if you want. But uh, it, it's a good indicator of the mechanical condition of a motor. Now it won't tell you anything about the carburetors or the electrical, but it will tell you that the pistons, rings, valves, whatever, are all in fair shape. Enough rambling. Let me get reset up on the motor and I'll show you how this thing works. Alright, here we are at the motor. This is a Merck V6 motor. This is just three cylinders and I've pulled the spark plugs out of all cylinders you're going to be cranking this thing over quite a bit if you take the plugs out it's a lot easier for that starter to turn it not as hard on your battery in my opinion it's a good idea so here we've got our hose made the thread into the spark plug opening and we're going to insert that in there and we're just going to turn it right hand, righty tighty, lefty loosey. We're going to tighten it in there. And then I'm just going to use the hose itself. And there's an O ring that seats that in there. Now, this has a quick connect on it, just like uh, an air chuck. We're going to pop that in there, make sure it's on there good. I'm going to get set up on this gauge best I can. And uh, we'll crank this thing over. See if I can zoom up on it a bit. All right. Now I'm going to have to walk past the camera. Let me crank it over here. Now, as you noticed, I cranked it over a good bit, and we've got a reading of 
20. Then we can release it, use this little button here on the side, and that takes us back to zero, and we can move on to the next cylinder. Now I've already tested this motor, and they're all within about six pounds of each other. So that's one good indicator that we've got a mechanically sound motor. Uh, just one indicator. There's many other things that count too. So, uh, but this will tell you that at least the cylinders and pistons are in fair shape. Um, and you can move forward from there. But if you have bad compression, uh, you're into a rebuild, something. Um, it's not going to be a great thing. So, adjust your price accordingly on those motors. Folks, thanks a million. Please come back, check out our videos. We will move forward with uh, another boating project that we're working on. Have a great day.